spent the last minutes talking about the role that cities can play in uh, fighting HIV and AIDS. And now we want to zoom in with two mayors who are uh, taking the issue head on in their cities. And they are Mayor Angela Brown Burke of Kingston, Jamaica, and Mayor James Mwalu of Durban, South Africa. Both mayors are developing strategies to combat the unique challenges that their cities faced. And my colleague, Atlantic Senior Editor, Alex Wagner, is here to take it away. Go, Alex. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you, mayors, both. I know you have lots on your plate, and we really appreciate you being here today. Um, I always, I feel like when you talk to public officials, the people with the most interesting stories, and maybe the hardest jobs, are often mayors of large cities. When it comes to global health concerns, and specifically HIV and AIDS, I'd like to hear from both of you, what has been the most impactful or resonant experience you've had with the residents of your respective cities on the subject of HIV and AIDS? And I'll start with you, Mayor from Kingston. Sure. I want to start with how I first became intimate with HIV AIDS. I, as uh, a counselor, which is what I was, was leader of a political organization at the divisional level. I had a number of individuals who were actually infected. Many of them would come and talk to me about it, asking for assistance and so on. There was one particular young lady, well, not really a young lady, she was an older woman, who left and went back to the country to stay with the family. A group of individuals left and went to visit her one afternoon, and they came back and they were distraught. And the story they came back with was that she went to stay with family because she really couldn't cope on her own in Kingston. And when they got there, she was sleeping on the veranda at the back of the house on a piece of cardboard. She had a plate and a bowl and a spoon that was sitting right beside her. And that's where the family had left her. And they had refused to take her inside the house. You could imagine just, just hearing that. The good thing is that they took her back to Kingston because she had been there for a number of years and they actually helped her, took care of her until she passed. The second was I went to the hospital to visit another worker and uh, I called my member of parliament, asked him to come down because I visited her before and she was asking for him and I know they had a good relationship. And so we were there talking, joking and so on and we were about to go, so I leaned over, touched her, said to her, we're gonna go, we're gonna come and visit you tomorrow. And the MP moved to touch her, and a nurse came over to him and whispered, she has HIV, don't touch her. And this was so This a, is an MP. This is an MP, but this is a nurse, a healthcare worker, inside the hospital saying this. Saying this. And so that just kind of brought home to mm -hmm. me the kind of problem we had and how difficult that was going to be to deal with it. So ever since then, I have been talking about HIV AIDS and our workers, their welfare, their well-being, and how we need to kind of give support to, to, to each of them. Mayor, uh, in, in Durban, we know that's the third highest rate of HIV AIDS transmission in South Africa, right? Um, could you tell us a little bit about your experience firsthand in dealing with the, with the HIV, the disease in, in South Africa, in Durban in specific? Well, thank you very much. Uh, my first-hand uh, experience was at a time when a young lady from the township of Wamashu was stoned to death. And her name is Kukulamin. <coughs> And it became an, a big issue in South Africa, not only in Etewin or in Devon. And um, we said, look, we have to deal with this problem. Because at the time it was known that um, there's this disease called HIV and AIDS, and AIDS kills. And then, of course, there was a stigma and discrimination where some people were scared to come out openly. And that young lady decided to come out openly in her village and declare that she was HIV positive. And surprisingly, because of her declaration, 
uh, a group of young people decided to go and stone her to, de to death. And that is the history of uh, the incidents of um, discrimination uh, in Devon. And, and out of that, and then we then look, we said, we need to mobilize people and talk to the people and actually educate them about it, HIV and AIDS. It is only when then we then took a decision to begin to be involved practically as councillors. Right cur currently now, I'm the chairperson of the District 8 Council. I work with NGOs, with civil society, where we discuss issues, implement our programs. We go out in communities and conscientize people, educate people about HIV and AIDS. The stigma seems to be a huge piece of this. I mean, it's a multifaceted <laughs> concern. Yeah. But when you talk about a society that is stoning HIV positive women to death or otherwise marginalizing them physically, emotionally, how do you, how do you begin to unwind that? And, and I, I would also ask, you know, because the face of HIV, as we've heard from all the experts today, ranges. It could be a young woman, it could be a gay man. And, and when you're talking about stigma, it's not just one person in society that, that's been stigmatized, it's a whole host of them. That, that is in fact so. I, I, I wanted to start talking about conversations. I'm a big fan of conversations. But especially in groups like these, once you start to talk about the power of talk, people believe that you are naive. People believe that the talk you're talking about is just people talking passionately, not looking at data, not listening in terms of things that people hold there, and not listening to the issues that people are having. So I, I want to talk about that. I don't believe we talk enough. And every time I come to one of these, I say, we might talk a lot, and we talk to one another. But when you go into our communities, there aren't that many people talking about HIV AIDS, where we are, the problem of stigma, discrimination, how unemployment and poverty um, intersects and pushes people in the margins. And so I believe we need to talk about it more. Not in the halls where we all know and we all have uh, documents that tell us about what's happening worldwide, but on the ground in our communities where people are faced day after day with finding food, with sending their children to school, with dealing with their health um, care issues, and trying to find individuals with whom they can share, individuals who can point them to those sources where there is, in fact, aid and help for them. Can I ask, if we're talking about, if we're talking about talk, <laughs> one of the things you notice, I mean, AIDS and HIV, affect cities around the world, right? And I would assume there are best practices that mayors can learn from each other. Is there a dialogue happening between mayors of major cities, cities where HIV is a real concern, sharing what works and what doesn't in terms of combating uh, stigma, in terms of allocating resources, in terms of showing what works best? Yes, uh, there is a dialogue uh, where mayors uh, get together and discuss the issues of HIV and AIDS, uh, particularly coming from the African continent because um, we are most vulnerable in many ways. Uh, the majority of our people are living in the informal settlements. There is a challenge of poverty, unemployment, inequality, and therefore they are at high risk of being infected with HIV and AIDS. National governments are making policies and the legislation, but the implementation is at a local level, and the process of our location, being in the proximity uh, next, uh, to the people at the end of the day, we as local government or mayors and cities are the ones that must make sure that we make an impact in terms of prevention, in terms of making sure that people are actually testing uh, both in terms of um, uh, HIV and AIDS um, uh, counseling and testing. So uh, I think that uh, there is a big role that cities have to play of ensuring that even these 1990 targets that we are talking about, it can only be achieved 
uh, when cities are practically involved uh, to make sure that we achieve those targets.